Good morning, everyone. As we begin this morning, I want to acknowledge the land that this building we are worshiping from this morning stands on. As we gather on this sacred land, we acknowledge that this is the dish with one spoon territory created in treaty by the Anishinaabe, Mississauga, and Haudenosaunee, binding them to share and protect this land. Subsequent indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans and all newcomers, have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. May we faithfully fulfill our treaty commitments to the land and its people. Welcome this morning to our, our Palm Sunday um, worship. If you're joining us for the first time here at St. Philip's, a real warm welcome. We're delighted to have you with us. Please check out our website, stphillips.ca, and you can find out lots more about us. Uh, my name is Mike Stutchbury. I'm the incumbent here at St. Philip's, and I'm joined here with my COVID-free household. And we're going to lead you in, uh, in worship and singing and prayer, and um, we're delighted to do so. A few things. Uh, this, of course, is Holy Week coming up. And I just want to quickly run through the services. They were on pre-service announcements, but if you missed them, they're also on our website, but I'll give them to you now as well. Uh, this evening, as usual, on Sunday evening at 9 p.m., Compline. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday this week at 7 p.m., there will be an evening prayer service. On Thursday, Maundy Thursday at 7 p.m., there will be a liturgy for Maundy Thursday. Good Friday at 10.30 a.m., we gather virtually once again as we mark the, uh, the, the story of the Passion. And then on Easter Sunday at 6.30 a.m., we're having a sunrise service out in the cemetery, and we'll have a little fire and um, welcome the new light of Christ. And uh, at 10.30 a.m., our usual Sunday gathering but will be an extra special one as it will be Easter Sunday. And next Sunday, Easter Day, there will be no Compline service, but tonight there is. I think that's all the services we have, but there's a couple of other things too. Uh, there will be, as usual, centering prayer on Good Friday at 9.30, but it will be a slightly abbreviated one. I think there'll be time for one sort of 20 minute sit, and uh, that will give you a, a, put you in a great frame of mind for our Good Friday service at 10.30. And um, there will be no um, St. Philip Sings on Thursday night. We'll miss this week, but then we'll be back next week with our, uh, our Thursday evening musical program. This week, the church, the building here, uh, which is a very special and holy place for us, uh, will be open for a quiet prayer. Um, I'm going to make sure the building will be open on Good Friday from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. and on Holy Saturday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, if you'd like to come by just for some quiet time for some prayer, reflection, just to be in this building again, uh, Feel free to come by those times, Friday 1 to 5, Saturday 1 to 3. Come in, there will be a little thing for you, a contact tracing form for you to sign out as you enter. And uh, just come on in, find yourself a seat, and um, then uh, when you leave, just, well, just leave. And just, you actually need to sign out on the contact tracing to say what time you left. Um, pretty straightforward. The only other rule, I guess, is if there's someone else here, uh, please respect their quiet and um, make sure if there's more than one person in the building you're wearing a mask and just keep your distance give each other space in the church but uh, you're welcome to come by as we mark this holy week today of course is palm sunday and we'll be marking the uh, um, the entrance of jesus into jerusalem and that leads into a, a for, uh, the story of this holy week um, as usual on palm sunday we'll have the full passion narrative uh, instead of a sermon. So uh, five of us are going to lead and read through that drama, and then we will have a, a few moments of silence to reflect on that. I will be blessing palm, little palm crosses we have this year, and I'll be blessing them in the service, and they will be on the basket that you see on the altar in front of me. That will be on the front porch of the rectory if you'd like to come and pick up a palm cross or two. The other thing I want to mention is that outside in the alcove between the two entrances to the church, you'll see a great big wooden cross covered in chicken wire. It's there as part of the, our children's Lent program, but it's also there for all of us to take part in. 
uh, the idea is that uh, you uh, bring a prayer. There are some uh, little rags there and some Sharpies in a bag, the bottom of the cross. If you'd like, you can take one of those out, write your prayer on there, and then you tie it to the uh, chicken wire. And so we already have a number of prayers on the cross. By the end of the week, hoping that we'll be full of our prayers. Uh, if you don't want to write a prayer, you can just tie the cloth in there and just offer that as your prayer to God, your whole being. And uh, so we'll, that will be there until next Saturday, at which point uh, people are welcome to bring flowers and put a flower, stick it through one of the chicken wire, uh, in, in the chicken wire, along with the prayers. And then on Sunday morning, we're going, I'm going to bring that cross in for our Sunday morning celebration. Uh, we cover it with prayers and flowers. So please do come along this week and do that. Now let's prepare ourselves for worship. Let's spend a moment in silence as we open our hearts before God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In the highest. Dear friends, in Christ during Lent, we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. On this day, our Lord Jesus Christ entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph. 
The people welcomed him with palms and shouts of praise. But the path before him led to self-giving, suffering, and death. Today we greet him as our king, although we know his crown is thorns and his throne a cross. We follow him from we follow him this week from the glory of the palms to the glory of the resurrection by way of the dark road of suffering and death. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection and new life. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, Lord God of our salvation that we may enter with joy into the celebration of those mighty acts whereby you give us life and immortality through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Hebrews acclaimed Jesus as Messiah and King with palm branches in their hands, crying, Hosanna in the highest. May we also go forth to meet Christ and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let's go pass these palm crosses out to folks here. And as I said, you can then come and pick a palm cross or two up from the rectory. Now let's sing that great Palm Sunday hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor.
O God of eternal glory, whose servant Jesus Christ bore our sins, encouraged the weary, and raised up the fallen. Keep before our eyes his passion and resurrection, so that our lives may be signs of his obedience and victory. We ask this in the name of Christ, our liberator. Amen. It's not listed here in the leaflet, but uh, we do, I, I believe, have a children's talk today. Um, and I can't remember who's doing it since it's not in the leaflet. Uh, so anyway, any children in, in the congregation today, come on up to your screens, and uh, it looks like Rachel is going to share a few words with you. Morning, Rachel. Good morning. Welcome. So, yeah, we heard a Good little morning. bit. Good morning. Good <laughs> morning. Um, welcome to all the children, and welcome to all of our inner children as well. It's good to see you. God bless. Um, as we heard Father Mike talking about a little bit earlier, uh, today is Palm Sunday. That's a day of celebration. And uh, I really want to feel that feeling of celebration. You know, have you, have you ever been to a birthday party where everybody's all excited and just uh, having a good time? And one of the ways that I find that people show their excitement is a little louder. So I'm going to give you permission to do this right now is to get a little loud with me. And we each just say, uh, hip, hip, hooray, on the count of three. One, two, three. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. And again, one, two, three. Hip, hip, hip hooray. 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 <laughs> one more time. <laughs> Wonderful. One more time. And hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, so today is a celebration, and it's when Jesus came riding in, and he was on a donkey, as we heard, and I'll tell you a little bit about the story while showing you this picture right here, and you can get an, an idea. Can you see that? This is the, the, the Bible that Nika and Greg gave to Helena for her baptism. So Jesus was walking with his disciples toward Jerusalem, and as they came into the city, Jesus told two of his disciples to go on ahead into town. He told them that they would see a young donkey tied there that they had never had never been ridden. Untie the donkey, Jesus said, and bring it to me. If anyone asks you what you are doing, tell them the Lord needs it. He will send it back to you soon. The disciples did what Jesus told them to do, and it happened just as he had told them found the young donkey, untied it, and started to lead it away. Some men were standing nearby, and they said to the disciples, Where are you taking that young donkey? They told them what Jesus had said, and the men let them take the donkey. The disciples brought the young donkey to Jesus, and they put their coats on it to make it nice and soft for Jesus to sit on. And as they made their way into the city of Jerusalem, people went ahead of Jesus, shouting, Hosanna! Hit the parade! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! And others followed behind, and they were also celebrating and shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Hosanna in the highest! All the while, people lined the street, cheering and waving palm branches. It was a wonderful celebration. And I wanted to share with you a little song that you might know about today. And if you just want to follow along with me, there's some actions too. It goes, this is the day. Can we all try that? This is the day. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day. That the Lord has made. That the Lord, that the Lord has, has made. made. And we do that again. That the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Beautiful. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. Again. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. One more time. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. Good, 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 good. And 
then you can try the um, the other part goes, this is the has made. So this is the made. I will rejoice this. I will in it. I will in it. And then this is the day. This is the day. Is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Beautiful. Let's try it all together. And if you don't get all the actions uh, perfectly, you can just feel in your heart what it feels like to you and make up your own actions as well. Okay, so ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four. This is the this day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Beautiful. Good job, everybody. <laughs> God bless and uh, happy celebrations. Thank you, Rachel. We're now going to listen for the word of God in Scripture. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and speaking. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore. I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me? Let us stand together, stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me beauty? Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join with me in, as we say, verses from Psalm 31 responsively. Be gracious to me, Holy One, for I am in sore distress. My eyes, my spirit, and my body waste away. My life is drained by sorrow, my years by groaning. My strength withers from guilt, my bones waste away. I am scorned by all my adversaries, a horror to my friends. Those who see me in the street avoid me. I am utterly forgotten, like the dead. And broken like a clay jar. I hear evil whisperings from many people with terror everywhere. They scheme together against me, plotting to take my life. As for me, I trust you, Holy One. I proclaim you are my God. My fate is in your hands. 
Save me from the hands of my enemies and those who persecute me. May the light of your face shine upon your servant. And your faithful love save me. Our second reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, chapter 2, beginning at verse 5. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the same form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hear what the Spirit is saying to our church. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While Jesus was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of a very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was this ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, Wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the 12. And when they had taken their places and were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who was eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I, he said to them. It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, 
But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more Jesus came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him, and lead him away under guard. So when Judas came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi! And kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested Jesus. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all of the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none, for many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. 
Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But Peter denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl on seeing him began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And Peter broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the, priests, the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they all shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they be began saluting him. Hail, King, King of the Jews. Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. 
And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, uh, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself, come, come down from the cross. In the same way the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sebachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's, he's calling, calling for Elijah. Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with, with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone across the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid.
you into a time of prayer. On this day, the church hears again the passion of our Lord, into which we are baptized. Created by the mind of Christ, let us pray for the whole people of God in Jesus Christ, and for all people according to their needs. For Mike, our incumbent, Kevin, Priscilla and Andrew, our bishops, Anne, our metropolitan, Linda, our primate, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in the church. For those who at this time of Lent are preparing for baptism, and for their teachers and sponsors, let us pray to the Lord. For peace among nations and forbearance among all people, remembering Afghanistan, Syria, Yemen, and all other countries facing violence and war. Let us pray to the Lord. For this congregation as we walk towards the cross, let us pray to the Lord. for the weary and the sick, and for those who are consumed with sorrow, for our leaders and our healthcare workers with the weight of this health emergency on their shoulders, for those who are out of work and struggling to pay bills due to the coronavirus, for our own needs and those of others, remembering especially those in our parish who are in particular need at this time. We pray for 
Bishop Michael Bedford Jones, for Glenda, Emily, Elizabeth, Bruce, Scott, Grayson, Eddie, Bill, May, Carly, Ty, and Teslin. We give thanks for all the departed who had the mind of Christ and were humble servants of God, remembering especially Ian Clarkson. And we hold the Clarkson family in prayer as they mourn their loss. For ourselves, that we may be obedient even unto death. Into your hands, O God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, you have heard the prayers of your faithful people. You know our needs before we ask, and our ignorance in asking. Grant our requests as may be best for us. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners, inviting them to our table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry that we come away from that. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. The glory of your name. Amen. Merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We come to that time of our service where we intentionally offer our whole lives before God. Following that, we will offer a prayer of thanksgiving for the uh, financial contributions that have been donated in the past week. Let's sing, Hear, O Lord, Your Servants Gather.
Let us pray. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. For the final blessing, just a reminder that if you'd like to stick around for our virtual coffee hour, just do so after the uh, postlude music. And before we go, I do want to say um, a word of thank you to Donna Dirtle who came by this week and uh, polished the brass and um, uh, perhaps more importantly arranged, it was hard to find this year um, because the times were in palm, palm leaves, palm fronds, and uh, all she could find were these, these beautiful leaves here. Uh, the problem is they're very small leaves. And so Donna spent, I don't know how long it must have taken her to make a whole basket of these little palm crosses out of the small leaves. So thank you, Donna, for all that work and the beautiful crosses. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, God of grace and God of glory. Amen.